it's Todd Alt. It's March 9th. This is the 25th episode of what may be the greatest show about risk ever. That's a forward-looking statement and likely not true because we can't cover everything in 40 minutes. But Jason Bartholomew, my partner, what can we cover today? The upgrade of Rocket, Rocket yeah. Companies, and the everlasting gobstopper, which is GameStop. <laughs> Yeah, we can cover that. Rocket got some afterburners from a couple of upgrades it for sure. sure. Did. Uh, you want to go over the market stuff? Yeah, why don't you cover the market? Because I got to tell you, I woke up this morning. I, I could not stay awake. I, I knew the market was going to open at 1 o'clock. I saw the open. I saw Riot up a little bit. For all, for full, full disclosure, I traded Riot today. I bought it yesterday. Yeah. I'm long Bitcoin. That's Full always, disclosure. Yep. I could not stay awake. I woke up at 6.04, way late. You were texting me. I was behind in Texas. And I see Tesla up $41. And I'm up like 100 Gs on the day, 100 grand. I remember I was down 23,000 yesterday. So I'm yeah. net up 72,000. And I sell. Took a profit. And listen, we, we, are, trans we are transparent here. Uh, Tessa proceeds to go up another, I think, 76 points. But let's cover the markets, and I'll deal with my pain separately as I cry in my own beer. That sounds good. Huge day for tech stocks. Big rebound. Uh, falling bond yields fueled the NASDAQ. It went up over 4% today. The Dow Jones was 31,832, uh, up 29. The NASDAQ is where all the fuel was, 13,073 plus 464, up 3.69%. And the S&P was up 54 to 38.75 bitcoin was actually enjoying the fact that the stimmy's coming out soon i think that had a lot to do with uh some of the bitcoin rally 54,247 ethereum 1834 stimulus 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 those checks are on the way jason you're going to update the market yep. we're going to update you shortly stay tuned on the stimulus update for those of you who are making 75,000 or less as an individual or 150,000 less as a couple you got a check coming. Yeah, absolutely, which could be in as little as two to three weeks, depending on if you filed direct deposit in your previous year or previous two years for your uh, income taxes. I feel like some checks are coming to some people. Yeah, checks are in the mail. It's just a matter of what they're going to do with the money. Oh, you know what Skyla's doing. Yeah, I have an idea. She's what getting she's her nails do. done, her, yeah. her fingers done. It's yeah. like enough for a manicure for a year. I don't know. Well, I don't know, man. She spends like... 70 bucks each time she gets manicured. That's going to, that'll save, that's like 20 manicures. I mean, she could possibly procure a few new glass pieces also. Ab possibly. Yeah. I don't know why she'd need one. Anyways, uh, you want to cover any individual stocks? Uh, yeah, let me let me uh, give you a little bit more in information on the markets overall. Oil okay. was down $1.25 to $63.80. Gold was up $36, cracked back over $17. That's at $17.14. And silver was $26 on the nose. Copper was $4.01. Uh, overall tickers, we wanted to start with the Gobstopper GameStop. Let's bring that up on the screen, Nick, if we can. I like that. This is gobstopper. today an uh, everlasting Gobstopper. Yeah, I like that. I think there's some merch. We're going to give away more merch. If you can tell me where the everlasting Gobstopper came from, just the first person to put it in the comments, I'm going to send you a t shirt. Did it come from Joe Manchin? No, dude, not oh, from Joe okay. Manchin. What? Oh, we're not on a... Well, we're doing it live here. Just give us just a second here. We've got GameStop that we're trying to Is pull up the up? chart for you guys. Is there a... Due to technical difficulties. Yeah, we might have a loose wire here. Stand that by. It happens occasionally. This stuff happens. Yeah. Well, stuff happens. What can you do about it? Is it back on? Yeah, make it full screen. Okay, oh. let, me, let me fix that real quick here. Let me fix that. We're having a little trouble here. That's Okay. This is what happens when you do it live. Yeah. All right. Are we okay now? Yeah, go to the top left here and expand that little green dot. Expand the green yeah, dot? Yeah, click on that thing. All right. There cool. we go. All right, here cool. we go. Oh, uh, Nick, thank you so right, much. Perfect. Okay, so $52.40 up today on GameStop. Now, I, I just before you get into it, I've been doing this for 32 years. I have never seen something do what it's done it, it has retraced 50 percent of its high loss yeah Th there is something in the water here that is not explainable i want you to understand none of you know what's happening i'm sorry mm -hmm. any of you who think you know all you uh um 
what are they Wall Street Reddit people? Yeah, you don't know. You, you're right that you have your your guys are on it. You're smarter than us. There's no question, and and you guys have done some analysis. There's something up, but we don't know why. I mean, there's a there's some yeah. sort of perfect storm brewing here, where you got a company worth now twelve and a half billion plus that was trading for nothing a few. It's just this is. The fact that it's holding on volume and volume and volume. And it's actually ripping after hours. I mean, well, it's up five. It's up six more in the after hours. Yeah. 564. I mean. All just... right. I'm going to let you cover this. Tell what what's happening in the world of of Reddit, uh, a, of of Wall Street bets, and why is the stock at $252.94? I can tell you this. In the aftermarket. The Reddit, the autists on Reddit are definitely, uh, they're more... Um, they're more honed in on GameStop now than ever before because th- it looks like they're just putting all the distractions from other tickers aside, and they're just unifying around GameStop. And they like the fact that the um, the former uh, PetSmart gentleman uh, Ryan Cohen is his name, right? Or? But he's uh, Chewy or Chewy. I'm sorry. He's he's actually come out with the e-commerce plan for a new strategy. So there's a lot of momentum with GameStop now, and I think the fact that the Senate had uh, Robin Hood back on Capitol Hill today. That was another interesting aspect of everything, talking about the um, high-frequency trading and the fact that their order flow is being sold for profit. It's been, it's been an ongoing saga with this. Let's come back to that commentary okay. later in the program. Okay. I want you to cover what happened in the Senate yeah. with what's going on with Robin Hood, their comments about commission-free, because yeah. I think those are important for people to pay attention to what's happening in the market. I want to go to, um, I never say it right, is it Canna? Uh, yeah, Canon. Canon. That's how you say Canon? Yeah. Okay, Nick, can we go to that screen real quick? Uh, up 962 today, Canon ADRs. Stock was uh, at $22 the other day. It's It hit 30 today, I believe. Yeah. Look, uh, along looked- with Riot being up to 5284, uh, Marathon being up to 3760, Ebong to 708, Bit Digital at 1607. I mean, these are just ripping. What's going on with Canon? Well, Canon, as an aside, they had uh, Integrated Ventures on the OTC. INTV is the ticker. They did a three-year co-location uh, for mining with uh, Computer North. They have about four data centers. They're really large. And what they're doing is they're actually using the Canon Av- Avalons, the uh, A1246s. I think they're around 87 terahash. They actually ordered 2,000 of those units from Avalon. Those are... Uh, Seven or eight thousand dollar machine. So that was another order that Canon had. Um, what's great about Canon being in the marketplace is it offers an alternative to uh, to Bitmain, which is the uh, giant elephant in the room. I can tell you, Bitmain a little slow in delivery. Yeah. So Canon is out there. They they have a distributor in the United States now. Um, Don't give them the number. Not going to give them the number. Our own trouble with those people. Yeah, we're. Right. I'm not going to tell you guys because we're trying. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Mom's yeah. the word. Anyway. Yeah. Whatever. So trust me. It, Mining people who sell miners, that those stuff, that stuff's in high demand. Very high demand. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks like Canon was the overall uh, leader today in the uh, crypto ticker uh, space, uh, up over fifty percent. Let's go to Riot, Nick. Um, it's up on the screen, and I'm gonna leave the Dow up there again, so you guys can see what was a remarkable day. For was the Dow only up thirty? <sighs> yeah. Let so it was the Nasdaq that it was, was up 464. Yeah, it was the Nasdaq. Well, I guess there's a little rotation. David Tepper, you may be right. Look he, at David Tepper's call. He was right. He was right. Let's get long these things. Um, so this Rye was up thirteen dollars. And so listen, ho hum, so, right? $13. This is why I say to you guys, don't listen to me. I am not a financial expert when it comes to it. I'm not a licensed financial broker or analyst. Uh, I was one at one time. This is this is for entertainment purposes, and for you to get entertainment out of my pain. Not only did I sell uh, Tesla at six hundred four, and it went to six seventy two. Now I made money on Tesla, so you can't complain, right? Right. Of course not. Um, I made good money actually. Yeah. Seventy two thousand dollars. Yeah. Which is a nice pay. <clears throat> That's a great pay. Of course, I had a million dollars at risk to do it, right? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but I was long Bryant. Into the close last night, and I thought it would be great to sell it at forty four. <laughs> so Nick, we're on the screen, right? Can we go back to that screen. Yeah. So those of you look at close at fifty two, you can understand my pain and why you shouldn't follow my advice because you're not supposed to do your own homework. However, what's up with Riot today? 
Riot just took the. I mean, it was there was some pent up demand uh, from the Nasdaq, so you had a, it had a basically a perfect storm today. It had decoupled from crypto. Yeah, but you saw last night crypto really putting on the pounds. Really, yep. it was getting to fifty two, fifty three, holding fifty four, approaching fifty five. Big. And I thought they, that that rubber band was going to snap, and it really did snap today. Yeah, and it helped a lot because of the tech. But you know the the tech smash today four percent. So obviously it's a Nasdaq ticker. So I'm not, for, for full disclosure, and I'm going to go through this really quickly, I'm not long Riot. I do not own any Riot right now, which is, I think, the first time I can say that in, in 25 shows. Yeah. Right? But that doesn't mean I won't buy it at any time. Right. But what I am long is Boeing. And a Boeing, I'm long uh, about a million dollars worth of Boeing. Uh, and I'm long about uh, a little bit less than a million dollars of Icon Enterprise, IEP. And then I'm long a little bit of NOVS. And then... Um, the other big position we is, own the AUMN. Yeah, and right. and Rocket we have still. Oh yeah, for sure. Rocket yeah. Mortgage we have we, seventy thousand shares of Rocket. We didn't even talk Rocket. about. We didn't even talk about. We're going to get to Rocket okay. shortly. Nice. Now the other things I'm not talking about are my thirteen D names, which you can find them on my filings. I do have some large positions in a few public companies, but I want to bring uh, clean the slate right now and let you guys know I'm not long Riot right now. Not that you'd be making any decisions on what I do. Uh, I'm not long riot. We're not. We're, full disclosure: we're not long on any of the uh, Bitcoin tickers, but we are long Bitcoin. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are definitely long Bitcoin. Yeah. Um. So let's go, Nick, back to the the, the screen again, and here's Tesla up one hundred and ten dollars and fifty eight cents today. Show us on the chart where it hurt you. Well. You want me to do the five day? No, I just want to show where you sold. Just I put... sold right here at six oh four. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's uh, I can't even that's find close. It. That's close. Yeah, hold on. There we go. There it is. Right there, six oh four. That's me. Yeah, we took profit. Nice. Yeah. And then it proceeds to Oh boy. But listen. You remember, you have to sleep sometimes, Todd. You can't just be. I've not been sleeping. You can't be a zombie and just click buttons for uh, yeah. twenty four hours a day. I can't. So. And I was late this morning to my breakfast with Josh. Yeah. And the team because I was tired and I got a call and don't you know I, wait stop, don't feel sorry for yourself. I sound like a whiner. Let's yeah. move on. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. Sorry. Jeez, I hate that. I hate that. Uh Tesla was was severely oversold, as we talked about. For sure. And I want to be clear. I want to go over this for a second. It did what I wanted it to do. What I said was you saw a, a, a multiple-day slide. You saw a slide into the hole. You saw some conviction from Kathy Wood, and I thought there'd be a snapback rally. Yeah. 41 points I was happy with. Yeah. It was nearly a 9% move overnight. Did I know it was going to be a 20% 20 move? Yeah. So, unfortunately, I sold it too early relative to where the information is today. But it did exactly what I wanted to, and I had a large position on, so I'm happy with it. And I would argue to all of you, if you're trading, you should have a plan. Yep. Otherwise, you get stuck in names like sometimes I do. Uh, KPMH. (laughs) Excuse me. KPMH. So, yeah, okay. so we had the plan. It was executed. We took profit. We felt good about 9%. So, yeah, let's move on. Let's go back, Nick, to the next page, iSun. Now, you put this on as a day trade. Yeah. Um, what's up here? I have no idea why you did it. Uh, well, the reason being is uh, I thought that all the green tech alternative energy tickers were very oversold, especially uh, another one that was BLNK, obviously. But I looked at the iSun, and it has a very low flow, and it looked like um, earnings is coming up, and I just looked like a good reversal for a day trade here. Uh, we needed to get some volume. We did. I actually texted you the range of profit. I thought we could make about 9 to 12%, and it actually exceeded it. It got up to, I think it was a 15% mover today. So I don't know. I didn't talk to you about if we took a small piece of that or not. Today you can call me Mud. Mud? M-U-D-D. <laughs> mud. Do you know why? Because one of my favorite journalists, Roger Mudd, died today at 93. Those of you who are young would not know who Roger Mudd is, but I grew up watching Roger Mudd like Walter Cronkite. Yeah. He died today at 93 years old. Hey, did we trade ISON or not? A little bit, I think. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, I don't understand that. That's fine. Let's go to Sundial. For some reason, you want to talk about marijuana, I guess because Skyla's in the room. No, well... Are you, a- you going to pull that up on the screen? Yeah, Sundial had a, a nice uh, reversal. You know, one day Skyla's going to snap. 
Nah. This is a carry state. You nah. can conceal carry state, right? You can open carry. You can open carry. She could have a holster like a, a pink pistol right there on the side. Pew, pew, pew. Should I start open carrying? Yeah, no. No? Get it. So okay. what about uh, Sundial today? Uh, it looked like a big reversal into the close. Uh, one of the... Uh, Up 17.8%. One thing I want to talk about was the country... Oh, wow, it did rip into the close. Yeah, Mexico uh, looks like it's going to be the largest consumer, legal consumer of marijuana. I find uh, that interesting that Mexico is going to smoke marijuana. Yeah, the whole country. Every, every uh, as a citizen, you must smoke weed in marijuana in Mexico. I don't know if it's a prerequisite to enter there, but it's a rite of passage, like sound, a like a burrito or sounds, a taco. Sounds reasonable. Maybe I, I got to tell you how to burrito this morning. Oh my god! Oh, you really? I love Mexican food. So yeah, Sundial uh, actually was a uh, leader on the uh, cannabis stocks today into the closing bell. Just want to keep an eye on it for an overnight idea. Uh, looks like there could be a lot of uh, international trade here, possibly, and some acquisitions, in my opinion. Uh, Sundial does have that large shelf in place, billion dollars. Yeah, they could do a deal at any time, they right? They could definitely do a deal. Now, they do have a ton of outstanding shares, over a billion. So it takes a lot to move this thing. It's always a target both ways for longs and shorts. Shorts like to you know get involved in any of these pops. Because they know it takes a lot to move this ticker. But let's keep an eye on Sundial into tomorrow and see what happens. See if there's any conviction in this move. Got it. Let's look at Blink Charging. Yeah, another nice move This today. is This stock had gotten clipped. Let's go. I'm going to go. If you could pull it up, uh, Nick. This is stock had fallen from $54 down to around, I think this is around the 29 range. Yeah. It, range. Right. So this is a, a, a kind of a bounce off the bottom, right? Absolutely. There was a huge block trade for General Electric that just passed through. How big? Really big. Let me go back. I'm going to tell you what it was. It was... Uh, yeah, so Blink was up uh, $5.71 today. Another uh, oversold green tech. Um, it had been beaten up for the last few weeks. So that was the same idea with ISUN. Um, so that was my thought there. Uh, look at that huge print on GE. It looks like a $67 million buy four yeah four million eight hundred thousand. Oh, we, we talked about GE when it was twelve dollars and breaking out, it hit fourteen dollars. You did hear it on this show, even though this is for entertainment purposes, we did like GE at twelve bucks. Do you that remember was, that day? Can that you? was your idea. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do have an idea occasionally. Yeah, that was a yeah. good one. Thirty two years of doing this, occasionally an idea comes to my mind. Wow. GE price target eighteen. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah. Yeah. But I was—I thought it was—it was very. Uh, so I don't understand this Disney thing. I wanted to get into this Disney thing. So they pass a hundred million subscribers, but what's the whole? Um, and I don't understand this whole backlash for racist advice. I don't understand Disney's racist or what? what do you know the story? I've stayed away from all of these uh, racist claims from everywhere. I don't want to fuel any fire for. I'm, I'm just not on the. I'm not on that train. You're not on that train? No, I just judge a person by their character and not the color of their skin. So I don't really care. They can, it's all propaganda to me. I, I don't want to stay, stay away from all that. But you like the color of Rihanna's skin, right? Yeah, I meet a person. I judge that person based on the content of their character. That's all. Bottom right. line. So it's that simple. So. Yeah, I don't care whether you're black, white, Asian, yeah. Pacific, it doesn't Samoan. Matter. It doesn't matter to me. No. I don't discriminate. So, yeah, I don't want to add fuel to their fire. It seems like that's a way that some people like to divide people. No, I know, but I'm seeing this Disney thing. I, I don't get it. I, I guess. I don't know. I guess you don't want to go there. I thought I'd bait you and goat you to go there. Not interested. But I am interested in OTRK. That is a ticker that had earnings, and it's very sold off. It looks like there's about a 100 to 200% upside on that one, in my opinion. We, here's a sign that I think everyone should know about. There may be a sign that things are recovering. For sure. Frontier Airlines filed for an IPO. IPO, yeah. I mean, there's an airline looking to go public. Frontier has a nice niche where it's just you just hop on the hop on the plane at a very affordable fare. And you have to you have to paddle to get it to move. Yeah, no, their fleet's pretty new, man. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's kind of like Spirit. They have a Does nice Does anyone new here fly Frontier? Hey, I really want to go into POWW and I'm bummed I didn't buy any. What happened to it today? Do you know? It was up. Damn, damn. All those ammo sales and I got none of it. I'm so bummed. I really am bummed. I, I'm not kidding. I wanted to uh I wanted to uh buy some POWW. See, we gotta keep track of this. I wanted stuff. to buy some OTRK. I wasn't up that much, 31 cents. Five percent. Hey, can we bring up the screen real quick, Nick? 
Bear with me here. I'm looking. It's at... six forty in the aftermarket, so it's up thirty six cents. Ammo. Yeah. Ammo. Ammo munitions. Arizona. Yeah. Is that how you say that? Yeah. Ammo munitions. Why is it pow? That's the uh, like that's, that's the ticker. It, yeah. That's like the Batman symbol. Yeah. Pow. P-O-W-W. Boom. Ow. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, obviously, uh, we like this stock. I've been yeah. following it for a while. I definitely like this stock for sure. They've got a lot of stuff working. The e-commerce business with GunBroker.com it hasn't closed yet, but when it does close, they'll be able to place all of their ammunition for sale on that. So, what did you make of the rip today? Overall, in the Nasdaq, yeah. What do you make of the rip? Well, low bond rates and stimmy coming. I mean, and this could be just some short term. Uh, it could be a stopgap. You never know. Why don't we talk about Robinhood? Uh, I would love for you to cover that today. All right, let's get into that. Let's talk about Robin Hood. Senate Banking Committee. Uh, the uh, Robin Hood is being scrutinized by... I find this to be uh, two different... It's two different outlooks. Obviously, it's partisan. So let me explain to you the Democrat side of the equation. They are uh, suggesting that maybe the financial transaction tax to um, would be cool... And it would possibly um, stop the passions of retail traders. And it would allow, Chris Van Hollen, Democrats, said it would uh, generate billions of revenue we could use to invest in other Americans. That's what he said. Not sure what that is, what to think of that. Republicans argue, um, particularly Tom Tillis, that a CBO report stated a tax could reduce investment returns market liquidity and weigh in on the overall value of the stock market uh, more broadly. So here we have an ideology of, you know, two different styles. One is tax everything, you know, every being successful, it could be considered evil. That's one side of the equation. The other side of the equation is, hey, let's, um, you know, let's allow to have free, free markets, free, you know, free trading and, um, Let's try to encourage investments, and let's not hinder that with more taxes. Because let's face it, the taxes that we're paying now aren't being allocated properly, in my opinion, when it's going overseas, it's going to pork. 9% of the COVID relief stimulus bill is actually being allocated to actual COVID relief. The rest is not even involved with COVID. So... So I just want a commentary on a little bit on this idea that you'll tax trading. Right. So the retail investor feels that the Robin Hoods, uh, the, the, uh, the Wall Street Bets people believe that they don't have an edge, that they've been cut out, that uh, institutions have an advantage. And now we want to tax trading on the very retail investors that are finally getting their own mojo. If I were you, if I were a Wall Street bets guy, how would you feel about the fact that you guys are finally making some money and have access to the same information, commission-free? Order flow, you're either going to pay a commission or you're going to let them sell the order flow. There is no free lunch. And so this makes no sense. Why do we kill the most – why do we want to kill the most efficient trading market in the world? It's not perfect. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get a perfect market. But why did the, was the government want to hurt people by thinking that taxing trading would slow it down? That doesn't help. Efficient free markets help. Let the average person be able to trade for, for I say it's free. I trade on Robinhood all the time, and I don't see any execution risk whatsoever. I'm very sensitive on price. I put my orders in. I get filled right away. I don't know what you're saying. You guys are making up problems. The Democrats, the Republicans, stay out of trading. Get out of the way. I don't know what you're even thinking. You built an efficient market, the most efficient market in the world. Get out of the way and let the regulators do their job. Can I just raise one more point? Sorry. That was a rant. Yeah, it was a good rant. So the actual money that, that Americans are investing and trading with, that money's already taxed. It's already taxed. Whether you have a job, a W-2, a standard job where you're paying federal tax, you're paying Social Security tax, you're paying FICO, all that is already being taxed at an effective rate depending on where you live. Now they want to take that money that's already taxed, your net income, and they want to tax it again on financial transactions. It's just Every time you buy and sell? Yeah, that's it's a small absurd. Tax, he said, a small. A tax. small tax started yeah. off with in California. Let's have a gas tax of five cents. I, now it's literally like 
half of all the cost of the gasoline. But now, but, you, you know what's good about that? Is actually, I have you here now. You're actually here. You said California, enough's enough. You picked up your entire family. I did, I did and my company. And you're here. I'm here. That sends a clear message, and you're not the only one that's doing that. Elon Musk moved to Texas, for God's sakes. Austin, for sure. So here we go. So, so you have policies that are failed, and then you have consequences from those policies. And they keep wanting to double down on them. Sorry, guys. I'm really passionate about this stuff. Why do you want to double down on taxing financial transactions? Yeah. I'm all for paying. No, why don't you collect the a actual income tax that you actually charge people? And you know, we already, we're already we paying capital gains, too, short and long term. It I makes mean, no sense How to me. can you... They want to rig the game. The, the bureaucrats want to rig the game so it's... A, so you have Don't let the individual investor make any money. Right. Don't let them have any power. And when they get some power, take it away from them by taxing them. It's like they're the casino. They want to they want It makes be, no sense. It's crazy. It's blowing Why my mind. Why do you want people I don't care whether listen, there's always you can't protect everyone from themselves. There's always excess. There's always the person that overtrades or does something foolish. But the vast amount of people have benefited from commission-free trading. Robinhood has helped people get online. Yep. It has allowed them right from their phones to be able to trade and buy stocks more than ever, participate in the capitalist economy. I don't know what the – I get great trades from Robinhood. There's no – and I'm buying some decent size, yeah. and they do fine. There's a, there, there, this, this idea that order flow and, and somehow Citadel is doing something wrong – you're either going to pay a commission or you're going to pay for order flow. I don't. It's not either or. Hey, I wanted to cover. Um, oh God, you know I can't keep up with this man. We're everywhere. Sorry, sorry. Jason and I oh. are on the radio. We're on uh, KEIB. Is it KEIB? Yeah. Yeah. I keep getting it wrong. KEIB, eleven fifty a.m. Los Angeles and Orange County, the Patriot Network, or you can go to iHeartRadio app and get us worldwide. And I want somebody worldwide. Somebody from the far reaches of the galaxy, like over in Afghanistan, if you're a troop, if you hear about us, make a comment how far you were away. We'll send you some merch, a care package or something. I don't know how you get it over there to Afghanistan or wherever they are. We can get it over there. We'll get, yeah, I, I know you can send it, right? Mm, yeah. By, it's like kind of Pony Express. It probably takes a while. Well, I mean, UPS and FedEx are worldwide. Hey, if we could go to the screen real quick, if you could pull up Stitchfish for me. Um, I, you know, Katrina Lake obviously founded a Stitchfish. I can never say it. Stitch fix. It's tough to say. They got smoked today. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, I mean, I like the... Uh, I actually have used that before. Hmm. I like and the concept, but I don't know. You know, it's tough for... The stock plunged 21% in extended hour trading. It's tough, though. It's a long process to find clothes and then send them back. And then, but, but you know they're what? They're doing $2 billion a year. Which they I don't understand because most of the fitting rooms have been closed in all the malls. So you can't even try clothes on. Why would you even go shopping? You can just order online and try them on at home. You can't try them on at the store. So explain to me why what, would, what was beneficial during this lockdown to go to the store when you can't even try the clothes on. So. so I wanted to wrap up the last 11 minutes of the show with this headline. Nick, let's pop up there just for a second. You want to read that headline? So Bitcoin tops $1 trillion in value again as the cryptocurrency's mm. price jumps. That's what do, you, what do you think? Of, what's interesting about this and what I want people to think about for the average person, a lot of you techies are really smart and understand Bitcoin much better than I do. Um, it's a global marketplace. Yep. You trade Bitcoin 24-7, 365 all over the globe. Wow, I'm just missing out on two trades here. We're doing this live, so I'm just t telling you what right you, now. What are you missing out on? OBLN and OTRK, we're missing out on both trades. I'm kind of frustrated right now. I don't blame you. So, We, we, we have some growing pains. We've got a new trading room being built. We're, we're not there yet. OBLN, I think we were in and out of. Yeah, we oh, were, I'm so, for sure. I'm so frustrated right now. No, but I want to talk about this Bitcoin thing because you got – people say that I won't, sh I won't stop talking about Bitcoin, but it is – uh, interesting to me because I learned how the accounting of it's being taken place and it's being treated as an asset. It's not being marked to the market. Well, how can we stop talking about it if all these companies are adding it to their balance sheets? Uh, Mass Mutual is invested now. You got Tesla. You got Sailor over yeah. at uh, MicroStrategy. Yeah, Goldman well, Sachs is opening up their crypto desk again. Right. So I saw JP Morgan's going to introduce a structured product that allows people to put Bitcoin in their portfolio every day just by buying one product. God, that's amazing. So you don't even have to buy Bitcoin. You can buy a product that's a synthetic. Yep. 
Which, you see, you hearing the theme here? Yeah, and also, well, the, the Canada has the, Vic, the Bitcoin ETF, and I'm sure we're going we got to have one coming, right? Yeah, right. We're off the screen, right, Nick? We got to have a Bitcoin product coming wow. to ETF eventually. OTRK right? is just, I'm just, I'm dumbfounded. We should be trading this stock right now. Well, what, what is that? On, it's on That's on the track? one I told you about. The, it was over That's on track, right? Yeah. I'm so they used to be called Orisher. Yeah. yeah. They they had a like a test kit. What are they, what's what is so exciting about them? Uh, I'm just so, I'm, I just know this is like a trade that right now is going on. All the chat rooms, all the social media. It's just one of those things that I know it's going to run. So maybe we'll look at it for an overnight. I'm not suggesting you buy it, but. We're just taking a look All at right, it. Right well, you're gonna, no one knows what that is. Yeah. So, so I, I really I want to get back to this. I really want to stay on it because it's getting to a point where it can't be ignored. Yeah. I mean, it went back down to 46, came back, and that's 54. India kind of backed off a little bit on their assessment. Right. They kind of like it was kind. It was pretty. But does this? There are people saying it's going to end up, end the year at a hundred thousand. I, I don't doubt it. To be honest. And I know really smart people that are gonna that think it should be it's going to a million. There's a lot of new mining going on too. You know, a lot of the terahashes being uh, United States now. There's you know China before was the leader in mining, obviously. Sure, United, but now United with uh, catching up. Yeah, I mean we've got a few different big miners coming on board, especially um, the the other ticker we traded today what was a GWAC. I think it was that was mm-hmm. a that's another that's a SPAC. that's a SPAC, yeah. right? So that's siphon mining. So I'm I'm asking you, what do you think is going to happen with it? What's what's your take on the adoption? Because it's kind of running away. I know that Janet Yellen's not a fan of it. No, but it seems like it's running away. It's getting everywhere. It's perfusive. It's in it's in Square. You can buy it. You can trade it. It's yep. going to be in Venmo. Coinbase going pu- uh, public. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, uh, there was a, oh yeah, PayPal makes it really easy. Uh, Venmo. So yeah, it's it's being adopted everywhere. You have the ability to what what needs to happen is it needs to become more mainstream in America so day to day folks can be comfortable using it as a form of payment. I mean, for example, silver, the metal. But coins, do you think it's going to be a form of payment or just a store of value? No, I think it'll be a form of payment also. I really do, like fractionally. I it's think, like I can break up my gold. Yeah, I mean, you could technically use silver to buy goods and services in several states in America. People don't do it, and that's the same thing we're at with Bitcoin, like. People aren't there's for example there's a strip club in Las Vegas you can pay uh, dancers with tips with uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin yeah. yeah I wouldn't know so I think Floyd Mayweather owns that spot don't quote me on that he owns the actual strip club yeah but don't quote me on that if you know for sure comment down below but I think Floyd Floyd do you own a strip club I think he owns that and it's a crypto strip club okay, is it called crypto strip club no that'd be that'd be interesting what's it called I don't know we need to look it up. We need to do some, Skyla, right. do you know the name of that strip club? Our, Floyd our researchers. Owns? We got about seven minutes here. We need to come up with that information. We're both new to Vegas, so bear with us here. We're, we don't know what everything. Do you mean new? I'm new to living to Vegas. Well, living in Vegas. But I'm not new to Vegas. Well, I'm not new to Vegas either. But I've been to Cheetahs once in my life. I live in the poker twice. rooms when I'm here. Do you? During the summer, it's a hundred. You don't play poker anymore. No, nah, I'm kind of. I used retired. to introduce Jason as a professional poker player, former major league baseball player, but in the minor leagues, yeah. and trader. But now I get to say. Not a pick poker player. And what's up? Here's what I do now. I crack open a rock a rock star or a monster at about 11 p.m. and start looking at the market. And then I try to stay up as long as I can. It may be the worst thing they ever did is they start trading at 1 a.m. It great. really is not good for us. I, 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 ah, boy. <laughs> Pretty. Sick. You can't help it because there's big, big, big variances. Listen, maybe... Hey, we'll- those of you people who are on Webull and you're on Interactive Brokers... It's kind of hard to avoid that some of the names you want to trade are trading differently at those hours. They are. I mean, yeah. Let me. Uh, let me. There's just, a lot of pre-market stuff going on. Let me ask the audience something, and the producer might be interested in this. Would anyone be interested in watching uh, watching us live stream at the crack of dawn, at like, well, one a.m. in the morning, showing some of our trading uh, oh, situations? God. Come on now. Would you do it for the people? Yeah, I would, as long as no one had a, a camera on me. We don't have to make a habit of I it. I look bad now. Well, imagine what I look like at one in the morning. Jeez, Louise. I'm just thinking if we went live, right? At hey, the if you're getting any value out of the show, you got to subscribe. I need you to push the bell so you get notified. I, we got to push that subscription thing more often. I think we got like 21,000 subscribers, but they're all over the world. Yeah, we need more. We need more. You always need more. We need more. Um, so the radio show has been a hit so far. I'm happy with it. You want to cover some uh, some other stuff besides stocks? I do. Let's cover some political stuff. So let's talk about guns. 
I love guns. So the Second Amendment news here in Missouri. Uh oh. The House passed a bill to allow concealed carry on public buses and trains. So uh, I like that. You know, the reason I like that is um, self defense in, is a basic human right. Uh, I mean, you could call nine one one, but in in shout out to all our law enforcement, they do a wonderful job, especially in today's climate under such scrutiny with body cameras and everything being highly scrutinized in a twenty four hour news cycle. But let's face it, if you call 911, it could take minutes for them to respond. And every second matters in a life and death situation. So I am very for this self-defense. Uh, being allowed to carry concealed on public buses and trains. Uh, hats off to Missouri with some common sense there. So what are your thoughts on that? Um, it scares me that people will be carrying guns everywhere, but I don't think there's a lot we can do about it. Listen, an armed society is a polite society. Let's just face it. You want to go down to hey, Texas? I know in I know in Texas, when you go down to Texas <laughs> and you're robbing the liquor store. Now, I would know nothing about <laughs> robbing a liquor store. But I've seen that when you're robbing a liquor store, it isn't the person behind the counter you need to be worried about. It's not the police. But it's uh, Joe Sixpack buying a keg of beer or whatever, <laughs> a 45 ounce or whatever, uh, and shooting your back in the back of the head. Yeah, I you... mean, a lot of people. I, I know there was a shooting in Texas in which the person was killed by the people in the in the church and not by the police. Yeah, for and they sure. whipped him up, right? Yeah. So I think that the problem is there's always going to be lunatics. You got to kind of deal with them. But that's just the nature of the biz, right? right? But I think being armed, unfortunately, um, you know, it's a right. It's a numbers game. Yes, it is. It's in our constitution. And the there's a big, there's an interesting trade off between this because there are certain countries that ban it and they do not have the death rates we do it with guns. But the problem is this sort of totalitarian thing is that we are an armed nation. Yeah. And the political people out there, have to be aware that we're not in, we're not going to be enslaved. Right. It's tyranny. They're like, oh, it's tyr against tyranny. tyranny. Right. They it's think, tyranny. They think tyranny can't exist again. Well, it can exist again for sure. It can. Yeah. It can. And, and it and if we're armed, you know, obviously the ar argument is, oh, you're going to take on the uh, M1 Abrams tanks, are you? Well, let me just remind you of this. Back in the 1970s and early 1980s, the USSR tried to take over Afghanistan, and these guys were fighting the USSR out of mountains with old AK-47s, and they hold off the Soviet Union for 8 to 10 years. And finally, the Soviet Union says, ah, oh, the hell with this. We're just going to pull out. We're done. So, hey, I want to cover a real quick story on Bitcoin, if you don't mind again. One no, more time. Hey, so let's go to the screen, Nick. If you look at this story, I, I want you to pull it up. U.S. government sells 0.75 Bitcoin for 38000 at current prices. What? This this is an auction going on where they they have seized some assets, including some crypto, and they're selling that crypto um, at a discount. They're selling it at an auction, but it reminds me of a guy who is I, I know through a friend of mine named Tim Draper. Now, Tim Draper, if you're out there, I wanted to highlight the fact that you bought thirty thousand Bitcoin for nineteen million dollars in two thousand fourteen from the Silk Road auction. And that Bitcoin is worth over $1.5 today. Tim Draper has been following Bitcoin. If you want to follow someone that understands Bitcoin, that's been in the trade for a long time, seven years, a super smart guy, this guy's up $1.5 billion on a $19 million investment. He bought it. People thought he was crazy. He bought it at auction. He bought Bitcoin from the Silk Road government seizure, yep. and he's got $1.5 billion. And he's long, and he thinks it's going to two hundred fifty thousand. Hey, it's uh, March 9th, two thousand twenty-one. It's the twenty-fifth episode. Twenty-sixth. You said twenty-fifth. Two live. I lied. Twenty-six. Oh, it's the twenty. Is that true? Yeah, for sure. Hey, it's the twenty-sixth episode of Risk On. Um, we're getting better with the show. We did it live. We want to do it right away. We don't want to have to wait for that edit. We want to cover the markets. It was a rocking day today. We're long Rocket Mortgage, wrong Rocket Companies. Yep. We're long Bitcoin. We will see you tomorrow. It's March 9th. We'll see you tomorrow.